Okay, you're in IT. So regardless of your level of IT experience, your level of um, security specific experience, you use email. We all use email. It's the 21st century, right? Um, so we've all gotten emails and we don't necessarily know the sender. And it could have been an email that we re received while at work. It could have been an email that we received on our own, on our personal email. And there's an increasing overlap with remote work, et cetera. So probably use Gmail. Uh, you've probably used Outlook and you may or may not know exactly um, what the risks are that come with the suspicious email and interacting with suspicious emails in certain ways that are harmful. So I'm gonna start out with the email threat landscape, indicators of phishing, defenses against email phishing and tools that can help. So have you ever, so have any of you ever received an email that you thought was fishy? And if so, why? If so, why did, what, what did you think was wrong with this email at a glance? What, what, um, you know, triggered that suspicion in your minds? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. This is Eric. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, with my company, we get external emails and we do have tests in which we are sent phishing emails and they want to see if we can uh, um, identify if it is a phishing email or from a, a trustworthy source. And I've noticed that <clears throat> all of our emails come with the, um, with the, um, um, what the, the signature. So if the signature is missing, if, it's um, a name that does not register in, in the uh, email system, then I usually mark it as phishing. Good. Or you can look for misspell words. Um, I, I don't open attachments at all. Um, but generally, it's it's one of those things where if, if it's somebody's name, I'll do a search on the name to see if that name populates in the, uh, in the email. Um, check name list, and if it doesn't, then I say, okay, then chances are it's phishing. So that's how I guess to to be safe and cautious. Right, good call, good call. Unknown senders are already a red flag and awareness training platforms of any sort should spread awareness around that specifically. I also see in the chat something about grammar, suspiciously bad. Yeah, I mean, especially in a professional setting, if you're receiving an email that, you know, that has a lot of spelling or, or grammar mistakes, then odds are it's not from somebody so professional, right? It's not from somebody who's doing what they're supposed to be doing with respect to the organization or you as an individual as well. So that that's automatically a red flag. This is already good thinking, already good thinking in this group. So I'm glad to hear that. Great. So yeah, I mean, as as um we had already begun to discuss, this is just one example that I screenshot and did not open from my email. Um, and if we go through this line by line, and again, this is just the email subject. What what is what are some wording and some language in this email subject that might make you suspicious? Um, go word by word. I already highlighted one a little bit of a sneak peek. Anyone can chime in if you want. What was your question again? So already, what like in, in this, um, you can all see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So in this screenshotted email subject, what are some red flags? What are some indicators that should, you know, make us be a little bit suspicious and have our guard up? without even opening this email. If you don't know, that's fine. Yes, free, mm -hmm. free, happening now. It's very oh. much, you know, motivating the recipient of this email to get excited and potentially a little bit irrational in, in the midst of that excitement and act. 
uh, for something free, for something that by nature is described as not being at any cost to you where it otherwise would be. And then again, another word of urgency. Happening now. Yes, also mentioned in the chat. Thank you. Good. This is a great group. I like you guys already. Um, so you see that. And also, you know, along the lines of this sense of urgency that the sender is obviously promoting. The exclamation point after the beginning of the subject, after tune up, they're using an exclamation point. Again, they're, they're really trying to trigger the human element and the vulnerability of that human element to react a certain way. And that's automatically a red flag. Um, I'm not sure, Eric, if, if that's been part of your phishing simulations that you'd mentioned you'd gone through. But, you know, often it is depending on, you know, provides the training. Any training that I provide, I like to use such examples in order to explain. So in enticing the recipient to click on a malicious link or download a malicious attachment, a lot of times there's not really a good way to know offhand what might be a malicious link or attachment versus what's not, but some good tricks I to look it up, as was mentioned earlier, again, good job. Also, if it's a link to hover over that link while it's still in the email, and see if the link that shows up when you hover over it with your cursor is the same as it's you know intended to be. Also, you know, for example, if it is if the domain, which is essentially the main chunk of the URL for those of you who aren't familiar with the technical um, terminology, if you look up that domain, um, you know, minus the dot com dot org, which is called the uh, TLD, by the way, um, looking that up on a Google search um, or, you know, the browser resource of your choice to look into what businesses might be out there with that name, for example, and see if it matches up to that domain, see if they really exist and if they look legitimate and if it is someone who should indeed be reaching out to you, uh, given your role within the organization, Giving, you know, given the types of messages that you're expected to receive to carry out your daily business functionalities. 